My name is Lily. I will be reading to you a story about Kale's visit to the Stollery Children's Hospital for an operation. Are you ready? Okay, let's begin. Hi there. My name is Kale. This is my mom, Melissa. I hear that you are going to have an operation. I came for an operation too. I am going to show you around so you feel more comfortable. Let's go over some places and things you may want to know about your time at the hospital. Some important stuff. Please do not eat breakfast the morning of your operation. Bring to the hospital all your medicines, an extra change of clothes and indoor gym shoes, special food or formula, medical equipment and supplies that you use at home, toiletries like your toothbrush and toothpaste, things to keep you busy, a special stuffed toy called a stuffy, or a favorite blanket. Patient registration. When you arrive at the hospital, go to either admitting and registration or pre-admission clinic on the first floor. Here, you will be asked about your name, birth date, and allergies. You will get a hospital band with your information on it called an ID band. After registration, check in at this desk. You will get ready for your operation here. For your safety, keep your ID band on at all times, just like Kale. You may have to wait for the nurse. Please be patient. While you wait, there are DVDs for you to watch or activities to do. There may be other children waiting too. At the Stollery Children's Hospital, there is free Wi-Fi on all the pediatric units. When it's your turn, a nurse will weigh you and measure to see how tall you are. Make sure you take off your shoes and stand up nice and straight. Next, you will change into hospital clothes. Please take off all your clothing, underwear, jewelry, and piercings. You may wear slippers or socks to keep your feet warm. Time to check you out. Blood pressure. This band gives your arm a hug. It will get tight and loose around your arm. Your job is to keep your arm very still, just like kale. Temperature. This takes your temperature by gently touching your forehead and temples. It will beep when it's done. Breathing. A nurse will put a sticker or clip on your finger or toe. The red light checks how well you're breathing. It may look like a band-aid, but with the light. Try to hold your fingers still. Medicine time. Your nurse will let you know if you need medicine called Tylenol. You can take it yourself or have the nurse give it to you. This medicine is to help you feel more comfortable after surgery. Some kids say it tastes sweet. You may also need other medicine. Your nurse will let you know. Next is numbing cream. The nurse will put some special cream on top of both of your hands. It will be covered with a clear sticker. The cream helps your skin feel numb, which is kind of like frozen. Try not to move it around. The cream helps you get ready for a special plastic straw called an IV. After you're done getting ready, you will meet with the anesthesiologist, the sleepy medicine doctor. This is a great time to ask lots of questions like if someone special can join you in the operating room. My sleepy medicine doctor told my mom she could go into the operating room with me. When it's your turn, a nurse will come and show you into the operating room. You can bring your stuffy or blanket with you. Visitors to the operating room must wear a hat and gown because the operating room is very clean. You might notice the room is very bright and can be chilly. There is a lot of equipment and there may be a lot of people too. It can be noisy with many people talking. The doctors and nurses will be wearing hospital clothes, masks, and hair nets to protect you from germs. All the people in the room are there to take special care of you. You will get sleep medicine to help you sleep and stay sleeping for your operation. This sleep is not the same as nighttime sleep. You won't hear see or feel anything while you're sleeping. The sleep medicine is put into a small plastic straw called an IV. You will learn more about IVs on the next page. 
You may also need to breathe special air using a mask to help you sleep. Some kids say the mask smells like strawberries. So what is an IV? An IV is a small plastic straw that goes in your vein to give your body sleep medicine. Veins are like tubes inside your body that carry blood all over. Can you find the veins on your hands? Steps for getting an IV. In the operating room, the doctor will take the clear stickers off your hands. They will clean your hand with a cool, wet cloth. A stretchy rubber band will go around one arm to help your veins show better. It feels like a tight hug. A small needle helps to gently slide the plastic straw into your vein. The needle comes out and just the tiny plastic straw stays in. A sticker and some tape goes over top to hold the straw in place. Things that can help when getting an IV. Take deep breaths and try to relax your body. You can choose to watch or look away. Squeeze your teddy bear or someone's hand. Tell the doctor if you want them to count to three. Use your imagination to picture your favorite place. It's okay to cry, but no screaming. Remember, your job is to hold your arms still. After your operation, you will go to PACU to wake up. It is also called the recovery room or the wake up room. PACU stands for the Post Anesthetic Care Unit. Nurses with special training will look after you here. They will check your blood pressure, breathing, and temperature, and look at your bandages. When you are more awake, your nurse will take you to your unit on the fourth floor. Safety reminders. When the hospital bed is moving, please lay very still in the bed. There will be more stuff attached to you than you remember. Try your very best not to pull on them. There will be a BP cuff, Met the medicine straw and some more cords. When it is time for you to leave PACU, you may be moved to an inpatient unit up on the fourth floor. Your family will be waiting for you there and will be very happy to see you. Here is a picture of a unit on the fourth floor. Each unit has its own special theme. Some of the units also have their own playroom for patients to use. In your hospital room, not all rooms have a TV, but there are some DVD players, movies, and game systems. You may have to share your room with another patient. There is a small cot or recliner next to your bed so that one responsible family member may stay overnight beside you. The monitors in your room will be checking your breathing and heart rate. Your IV machine will give you fluids and medicine. If you are allowed, you may have something to drink. Ask your nurse if it is okay before you have anything to eat or drink. After surgery, your nurse will check your blood pressure, breathing, pulse, and oxygen level. Ask you if your operation hurts. Ask you if your tummy is upset. Check your IV, check your bandages, and many other things to help you to a speedy recovery. If you are uncomfortable or your operation hurts, your job is to tell your nurse how you feel. Asking your nurse or doctor questions about things you don't understand is important too. When it is time to eat, your meals will be brought to your room. There is also a kitchen with a fridge to put your own food in. Please make sure you label your food and do not take other people's food. There is a water dispenser, coffee machine, and some snacks for your patients. Check with your nurse first before eating and drinking anything. While you're in the hospital, here are some people that you might meet. A physiotherapist. They help you move and get back to doing the things you love to do after you have surgery. They teach special ways to walk if you have a cast and exercises to keep you strong. An occupational therapist sees you after surgery to help you do the things you want to do. They teach you how to get in and out of bed, get dressed, and feed yourself. You may also meet a child life specialist. They are there to help you understand more about the hospital and what it's like to go for surgery. After surgery, you can work together to come up with ways to make things easier and more fun. There are special programs and activities for you to go to because it is important for kids to play even in the hospital. 
To learn more about the Child Life programs, turn the page. There is the beach, where you can go and play, an evening family program, the teen room, music therapy, and pet therapy. Ask the Child Life Specialist for more information about these programs. Social workers, help your parents or special adult with any questions they might have about your hospital visit. Lab technicians, your blood tells us a lot about your body. Lab technicians get a small amount of your blood so doctors can know what your body needs. Remember when you had numbing cream before? Well, after surgery, you may need a poke for a blood test. You can ask for numbing cream for this poke too. This time, the cream is put on the crease of your elbow. Try not to move it around. The cream helps you get ready for your blood test so that you do not feel the poke as much. Before you can go home, you'll need to be able to do these things. Eat and drink. Go for a walk or be able to use crutches. Use the bathroom. Make sure your operation doesn't hurt too much. And get your IV taken out if you have one. There might be other jobs your medical team has for you to do, but they will let you know. Well, now it's home time. Your nurse will let you know when you can go home. There may be last minute instructions on how to care for you at home. Ask your nurse before you leave. Make sure you bring home with you all the stuff that you brought to the hospital. Thanks for following Kale on his surgical journey. Make sure you talk to your family, friends, nurses, or doctors if you have any questions. This is the end of Kale's story. Here is a list of all the friends that helped tell Kale's story. Thank you for listening.